Next up, we have Sam Hatoum and Mike Rissi speaking about super fast end-to-end -end testing with Velocity. Sam is the founder of Zolvio and a core member of the Velocity team. He's also the author of the Meteor testing manual the Me and the Meteor Cucumber testing framework, Meteor WebDriver. And he wrote RTD, the first unit and end-to-end -end testing framework for Meteor. Mike Rissi wrote and maintains Mocha Web, the first integration testing framework for Meteor. He's also a core member of the Velocity team and is responsible for all the Velocity support in the Meteor core. He's also the author of MeteorPad, which allows you to share Meteor code snips with others. Everyone, please welcome Sam and Mike. Hello there, everyone. So today we're gonna to talk about end-to-end -end testing with Velocity, and after we've talked about that for a bit, we're gonna talk about how you can make it super fast. Uh, my name is Mike Rissi. I'm Sam, and we're both on the core Velocity team, as, uh, as we just, uh, just heard. So I'm writing a book called The Meteor Testing Manual. Um, it's all about how to do unit testing, end-to-end -end testing, integration testing with Meteor. And uh, today and tomorrow, you get a 20% discount if you go to forward slash dev shop. And that's my plug for the day. So Mike's going to talk a bit about Velocity. Yeah, so Velocity, for those of you that aren't familiar, is the official Meteor testing solution. It's a community effort. And one of the main goals with Velocity is to make it so that testing is reactive. So as soon as you save a test, you immediately get feedback. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but it is getting very close to 1.0, uh, something that we're comfortable with stable. Uh, I work on the Mocha project for Velocity. Uh, Sam here works on Cucumber, and there's a bunch of other ones too. So I'm going to show you a demo of Velocity for those that haven't seen it. I'm just going to make these windows a little bit bigger. Um, so, oops, there you go. Is that right? That's good. Okay, so I'm going to just add a, a new Meteor app. Meteor create uh, hello velocity. Well, hell velocity will do. <laughs> <laughs> CD that. Meteor. And on here, I'm going to go to localhost. Let's give that a second to fire up. So, this is our fantastic app where you can just click the button and the counter goes up. Great. So now I'm going to go into Velocity here, into, sorry, into the new app. And I'm going to say Meteor add Zolvio Cucumber. Now Zolvio Cucumber depends on Velocity. So Velocity is a, uh, a test middle, testing middleware, if you like. And um, Cucumber depends on it. So the first thing you see is that Velocity has been loaded into the app. And you get this little dot up here. So this is in your app. Click this dot, and it gives you how many tests are passing. At the moment, there's no test, so Cucumber and other frameworks also allow you to add sample tests by clicking this button. So I click it. And this is my project. You can see Meteor rebuilding down here. And what's happened is it's just added a bunch of tests and a bunch of boilerplate code that's needed to get the test running. So it's an intentional failure. It says here intentional failure because the title is not correct. So let me close that and show you what the idea of reactive testing is. The little red dot up there is just like a continuous integration server if you've ever used one. So I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to change this to what it's expecting, which is hell velocity. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. And, uh, and now we get a green dot. So I make something that I do something that makes the test fail, and I get a red dot. I open it up, and it can tell me all about what the problem is. So that's velocity, um, and it allows you to do that with other frameworks too. And we'll, we'll go into a bit more detail about what this framework here is shortly. Now, I'd like to give you an end-to-end -end testing overview as well. Who knows what an end-to-end -end test is? Excellent, then you're all going to learn something. So um, when we talk about end-to-end, -end, we talk about a test from a user's perspective, if the user is accessing the, um, the site. So the end-to-end -end boundary here lies between the browser and the database, because that's the entire system. If we're talking about um, a REST API that's accessing the system, then we're saying the end-to-end -end boundary lies between the server and the database. and so. The important thing here to realize is that when, you look, when you're looking at end-to-end -end tests, you're looking at it from the perspective of the consumer. If that's the user, then it's the, um, from the browser all the way to the database. And if that's an API, then it's from uh, the, data, it's the server to the database. Now, Velocity lives on the server. And so what you saw there is an end-to-end -end test framework, Cucumber. And it uses WebDriver. And that's the, um, the thing that goes to the browser and, and does some testing. Now, when you're doing that locally, and the developer's also using the same application, 
what happens is you get a collision with the database. So the test just wants to kill all the users before it reruns and does some assertions. And the developer's sitting there trying to access the site, and all the, all the um, users are being cleared. So that's not going to make it very easy to, to develop an app. And so what we came up with for Velocity is the mirror concept. And a mirror is an exact replica of the main application. And it starts, it's really lightweight. It runs after the Meteor build process happens. And it takes milliseconds to start up. <coughs> And so in doing so, it means that the tests can run against a separate database, a separate browser, a separate everything, and the developer can be happy working on their own application. So I want to show you what end-to-end -end testing looks like today with Velocity. Um, let me exit this guy so it doesn't play havoc. All right. So I'm going to start running Meteor down here. Reload this. And while that's running, I'm going to show you this end-to-end -end test. So Cucumber is what we're looking at here. Cucumber gives you the syntax called Gherkin syntax. And Gherkin is like English. So you have this ability to say what the feature is. If you're familiar with Agile, that's a story type um, syntax. You've got here some more context you can put in, like links to a web page or something like that. Let me just turn off all these show passing tests. And the interesting thing is when you get down to this part here, which is given, when, then. So we're using English. And this English phrase, I am on the home page, translates to executable things. So let me show you what that looks like. I am on the home page. I navigate to backslash. Here's the, sample, here's the definitions. It says, I am on the home page. It uses some regex to get the uh, given phrase. Cucumber, this framework, gives you a browser object. Browser, we tell it to go to the URL of going to the Meteor Absolute URL, which is the home page. The next step says, I navigate to this thing here, which pulls out a parameter and gives it to us as relative path. So we say, URL, go to this relative path. And then we say, then I should see the title of expected title. So we tell the browser to go and fetch the title from the web page that's running at, that, um, at the previous path. And then it gets the result. We get the value of that result and make sure that it's equal to the expected title. And that's why you see when I change this to be a different title, that's why the test fails. So that's what an end-to-end -end test looks like. This is, a, um, this is done in Cucumber here, but really the end-to-end -end part is the part here where the browser is doing the accessing of the web app. That's a demo of how you can do Velocity end-to-end -to -end today. And so I don't know if you noticed, but that uh, suite that he just ran took 81 seconds. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that has an end-to-end test suite that they run regularly? And if so, it probably takes a long time. <laughs> Because <laughs> usually when you have a real app, you're talking about hundreds of these. And it can take anywhere from like minutes to hours to uh, run a, a large end-to-end -end test suite. So that's no good. And what's the answer? Uh, paralyze it. So to think about how we're going to paralyze, like let's first look at a typical end-to-end -end test and some of the things it does. So often you'll start with a clean database, create a generic user. Sorry. And log them in and make sure that they're logged in. Now, this won't work if you want it to be run safely in parallel on the same server as a bunch of other tests. You can't have tests resetting the database. Every user that you're creating has to have a unique username and email. And even after you've like, handled all of these like, various edge cases, there's still going to be this nagging doubt in the back of your mind that your tests are interfering with each other when they're running in parallel. So we wanted to explore a different approach. And Sam talked about how we used mirrors earlier to separate the testing environment from the dev environment. And we thought that we could use mirrors to separate the testing environments from each other. So what we're going to show you next is what this looks like when you're running a bunch of mirrors together at the same time. So we have a test that works parallel locally. Um, let me just exit out of this. So you saw that that took 81 seconds. Now, new, the new version of Velocity, which is almost there, actually this is a new version of Cucumber, you can specify how many mirrors you actually want to run. So now I'm going to run four of them. Let's do some simple maths. You've got 81 seconds, and you've got four mirrors running now. So I'd say divided by four would be about what? 20 seconds. Right. OK, you can see already that's a lot faster than before. So it took, what, yeah, 80 seconds. That's a minute and a bit. And locally, I can now run the same test much quicker. But that's not fast enough, is it, Mike? Nope. 
and we want to make that <laughs> even faster. So what if you want to run thousands of end-to-end -end tests at once? Like, is that even conceivable? And with the amount of like, computing power that you have on a laptop, the answer is no. But if you run your, cloud, or if you run your tests in the cloud, uh, that is possible. And that's what the next demo is. To the cloud. All right. So, oops. So this, I'm going to now run on a humongous uh, instance in the cloud. I'm going to run 40 of these mirrors. So this is still alpha software. I'm going to put that disclaimer out right now. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. It's now going to start them all up. Great, it's looking good. It started 40 phantoms, 40 of those things. And it ran all tests in around two seconds. Well, actually, it's four seconds. But if I do it again, it would be two seconds. <laughs> Let's see. Have we got two seconds? All right, it didn't uh -oh. work. Okay, I told you it's alpha. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I mean, you can, you can see that by, by running it in the cloud, there's, there's just some timing issues and things like that that uh, should be fairly easy to fix. But once these work, then we, we have actually seen this run as quickly as two seconds. All right. <laughs> um, so we talked about end-to-end -end testing, how you can do it, how you can do it today with Velocity, how you can get started very quickly doing end-to-end -end testing, and how without any additional work, once we get it fully working, um, without any additional work on your behalf, you don't have to do any crazy stuff to make the test run in parallel. It will just happen for you. Now this, you can't really do with any other framework. And the reason Meteor makes it so easy is because it's fully enclosed and we can run mirrors really quickly. Um, so that's what you can do with Velocity and um, test in end to end testing today. And we still have a lot of ideas about where we could go beyond this stuff. Um, one is that that uh, server that you saw running the test in the cloud, that's something that could be shared amongst the whole team because most of the time, each individual developer doesn't need to be running the tests. Um, we're also interested in exploring some integrations with uh, SAS Labs so that you could test with a bunch of different browsers at the same time and use more than just like the phantom that you saw today. Um, also interested in using Docker both for better isolation and also so that you could run something locally on your laptop that's more similar to what you'd see in production. And maybe most importantly, uh, there's no reason that this has to be used only for end-to-end -end tests. Um, it could be used for anything like integration tests or performance tests. Um, basically, we don't think that there's a reason that you should have to wait much more than like five to 10 seconds to have your whole test suite run. And that's it. That's the end. This is a proof of concept. Um, it's almost there. It's almost usable. Um, the, the distribution of end-to-end -end tests for Cucumber is almost usable. And uh, if you're interested in helping out, please do get in touch. And uh, now you've seen this presentation end-to-end. -end. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Sam and Mike. Um, again, if you're watching this presentation online through the live stream, you can tweet in your questions using hashtag DevShop. Uh, does anyone in the room have questions? You. Um, so what's the current state of thinking between uh, tiny test and velocity and kind of how they work together or conflict? Or um, so, uh, question. Uh, right. Uh, what's the relationship between tiny test and velocity, more or less? Yeah. Um, so I'm actually working on making Mocha work with package testing. Um, so you can like swap out the tiny test piece and put Mocha in instead. Um, it's not like ready for prime time yet, but it's not super complex to do that. Uh, and I know Jonas, who's working on Jasmine, is interested in doing the same thing uh, to make it so you could use that. Um, yeah, is that? Basically, the tiny test is something that can be plugged with other frameworks. I guess that's just what I'm trying to say. And tiny test is the only pack, the only thing that allows you to do package testing right now. Um, but as soon as this, uh, this approach that Mike's got works for both Mocha and Jasmine, then um, you shouldn't need tiny test. Um, I should mention also, uh, when Velocity is used in that way, it's being used more to collect the, collect the results and report them to the user. And it's not doing the things with like mirrors and whatnot that it's usually doing. So it's sort of a, a, a piece of Velocity that's used in that situation. Can you expand upon the details on how you parallelize different test cases at least, and how I presume you avoid different instances running the same test, right? So how do you allocate tests between them? So um, 
the way that demo runs is you've got um, 60 features and um, we fire up 40 workers, so the mirrors are like workers, and they consume these features from the database and they mark them as done as they get them done. So if you've got 100, test 100 tests on the files, it's going to um, just go through those one by one. So a mirror will come up, it'll keep consuming from these files until, it, until all files are depleted and then it'll turn itself off. Yeah, so the, the question was, uh, were the tests running on a single process or multiple processes, and if there are any plans to, to, to run on, on more cores? Um, because each mirror that started was uh, its own process, its own node process, it by default takes advantage of multi cores on a machine. So a node can only run on one, one node, one, one node, um, but uh, one core. But once you have 40 node processes running, then the operating system would distribute them to different cores. So we don't have to do anything, we get it for free. But it, can you have uh, even multiple machines and run across multiple machines as well? Yeah, so the, the other question is, can you have multiple machines? That's actually on the plans. We were hoping to have that as a demo for today. But yeah, that's, that's the plan to say, you know, you can have four really big beefy machines if you had to, and you, that's where you could run 200, 500 mirrors. So the question is, if I want to learn more about velocity, where do I go? Well, you tell me, Robert. <laughs> so <laughs> we, well, we go to, uh, the first place to go to is uh, velocity.meteor.com. That's the official website for velocity. And then uh, I'll do another plug for my book is you can go to my book and read more about it there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.